in the previous lecture we proved uh, the lgb lemma and we also saw that the proof gives a slightly more general version of the LV lgb lemma where we do not need to assume the crossing condition as an application of the generalized lgb lemma i'm going to prove the cauchy binet formula which is a generalization of the fact that the determinant of the product of two squared matrices is the product of their determinants this is a generalization to rectangular matrices and it says the following let x uh, n by m and y m by n be two rectangular well possibly rectangular matrices uh, with entries in any commutative ring then you can look at the matrix x times y which is a n by n square matrix so you can talk about its determinant and the cauchy binet formula tells us what that determinant is it's a sum over all subsets j of the set 1 to m which have cardinality n of the determinant of a square matrix obtained from x by selecting the columns that are indexed by the elements of j and the determinant of a square sub matrix obtained from y by selecting the rows that are indexed by uh, the subset j so this of course will be zero if n is greater than m because this sum will be an empty sum you cannot really choose a subset of size uh, n from a set of size m if n is greater than m and if n is equal to m you get the usual formula for the multiplicativity of the determinant so now for the proof you take s to be uh, a1 up to a m uh, a n i'll insert m more nodes c1 up to c m and then b1 up to b n so let me just draw this in a small example where n is equal to 3 and m is equal to 4 so we have a1 a2 a3 c1 c2 c3 c4 b1 b2 b3 and we'll put weights uh, weight of a i c j equal to x i j and the weight of c i b j is equal to y i j so the weight of uh, if the edge from a1 to c1 will be x11 this one will be x12 this will be x13 and so on on this side we'll have y11 y21 y31 and so on now all other weights will take to be zero now apply the lgv lemma to this setup the generalized lgv lemma to this setup so what we get is mij is the number of paths gamma from a i to b j v gamma um, so this is nothing but sum k goes from 1 to m x i k y k j so that's just the i jth entry of x y note that here we don't have the crossing condition because you have for example this edge from a2 to c1 uh, which crosses the edge from a1 to c2 so we have lots of crossings here crossing condition does not hold etc now i haven't drawn all the edges of this network so that's the the left hand side of the lgv lemma gives determinant of x y 
what about the right hand side so the right hand side uh, the generalized lgb lemma gives a sum over all paths omega 1 up to omega n omega i now it need not be from a i to b i but it's from a i to b sigma i for some permutation sigma but these are assumed to be pairwise non-crossing and then we have sine of sigma times product i goes from 1 to n weight of omega i okay so we can write this as sum over sigma in sn sine sigma and then let's look at the uh, path each path must go through some of uh, one of the c points so each path must pass through one of these points in the middle column and so let's say that uh, they pass through the points k1, k2, kn. There will be n of those points. So this will be a sum over all 1 less. I'll write those points in decreasing order, not necessarily in the order in which uh, the paths pass through. So you choose some uh, n points through which they have to pass. These n paths will have to pass through n distinct points because they are non-crossing paths. And then you have a sum over permutations in Sn uh, and the path is going from i to uh, k tau i and then going from k tau i to sigma i. Okay, so now let's just uh, rewrite the sum. Let eta be the permutation sigma composed with tau inverse which means that uh, sigma is uh, tau eta composed with tau And so what we have is that the sine of sigma is sine of eta times sine of tau. So we write this sum as sum over all. Let's rearrange the sum 1 less than k1 less than or equal to kn less than or equal to m sum over tau in sn sum over eta in sn sine of sigma which is the same as sine of eta times sine of tau and then we have product over i x i k tau i and then we have y uh, k tau i eta of but well, let's just call this sigma i but this is the same as uh, eta of tau i so now if we just this is just the sum over so now you call this subset k1 k2 kn as j sum over j in m uh, size of j is equal to n and now you can break up this product into factors. These two sums can be taken independently of each other, independent of each other. And this product here can be renumbered so that it's not over i but over tau i. And so what you get is exactly uh, sum over tau in Sn sine tau product i x i. Uh, k tau i and then you get sum over eta in Sn sine eta product over i 
y i eta y k i i am sorry k i eta i but that is nothing but determinant or uh, a sum over j determinant of x uh, star j times determinant of y j star as claimed in the Cauchy-Binet formula. 